toasted, but the Pinot Noir lends an earthiness and toasted oak barrels lend a smokiness that really gives it a distinct character. You can pair this wine with big foods, right? So red sauces and red meats, but those earthy smoky notes really complement vegetables well. We think you'll enjoy it. Cheers. Hello and welcome to Cooking with the Cap Times. We're so excited to welcome both those who are watching at home right now and those who are in person here. We have an extra big in-person audience this month because this is a special Cap Times Idea Fest edition of Cooking with the Cap Times. So we're so excited to be able to welcome an expanded group of people here to watch it live and then taste the finished dish. <laughs> if this is something you'd like to do in the future, you can do that by becoming a Cap Times member at membership.captimes.com. Give any amount to support local journalism and you'll have the chance to join us. We have to do this every month. You'll get an invite, you can respond, and then you can be here in person. Before we get started with our chef, Awa Siwi, I do want to thank our sponsors for this series. So our official kitchen sponsor is Kesnix. That's where we are now and every month. They are such a wonderful host. This is a place you can come to shop like a chef, any of your kitchen needs. It's open to the public. You can come and get them filled here. I promise they have whatever you need. And then our official wine pairing sponsor is Leopold's Books Bar Cafe. You just saw a short video from them showing the official wine pairing for this month's food. They pick a wine for each, each food each month that's perfectly paired for that dish. And our guests here also will get to try that wine along with the food at the end of the night. And if you'd like to try that wine yourself, you can win a bottle by asking questions throughout the night. We'll get them answered by our chef, and then we'll pick one winner at the end who asks, I don't know, the best, the funniest, whatever we decide is the best question at the end of the night. Very subjective. <laughs> yes, very subjective. And you can win a bottle of that wine to go pick up from Leopold's. And I'd also like to thank our video partner, Hinkley. They are what's making this possible right now, what you're watching. We so appreciate their great work. And I think that's all I have to say, so I will pass it off to Lindsay Christians. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Beck. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone who is here tonight. Thank you, everybody at home. Um, Awa, so happy to have you here. Happy to see you, too. Happy to have you all. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, let's get started by just Tell people a little bit about who you are and about what you're going to be cooking tonight. So I'm Awa CB and I'm the owner of Liderista Awa. So it's a West African catering and whole food manufacturing business. Going to the restaurant business now, hopefully in January, so it's happening. So we're going to be pretty much the first West African restaurant in Madison. Oh my making goodness. Making authentic West African food, because I think Madison needs that. Yeah. yeah. I loved your description of uh, what you're going to be doing at the restaurant. Yeah. And I wonder if you could just share that a little bit with folks, like what your vision is for that. So the vision, for you to walk in and feel the culture. It's, we've had opportunities where we could have been in the gas station. And I uh. said no, because that was not the vision. The vision was always that you walk in the space and then you feel like home. Home for my West African uh, brothers and sister, and also home for you that have visited because or Ghana or Nigeria, then you know what it is to have a feel and a sense of what that culture feels like, because it's like the hospitality, mainly. Yeah. That's what we thrive on. So that and the dishes, right? You're walking, everybody that walked in here was like, it smells so good, we haven't even started yet. So, <laughs> it's, <laughs> so it's the whole point. I want it to feel like a part of West Africa. And why West Africa? You will say, well, you're from Cote d'Ivoire, so why do you emphasize so much on West Africa yeah. and not just say your country? It's because my country is really a hub for the West African countries. We have people from Nigeria, Ghana, Mali, Guinea. Like we have everyone there. Mm. So our food scene is very, very, very colorful and it's um, very diverse. You know, just like the way you have it in the US where you have Chinese food, you have Mexican food. We have that. So we have like the whole of West Africa there. And then Cote d'Ivoire itself has 62 ethnicities. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so it's a whole. And I cannot just say Ivorian food because that will be a disservice to the culture because we do share similar cultures if that makes sense yeah no it totally does yeah it, it seems like just a vast variety to choose from Correct. so when thinking about what to present tonight how did you how did you decide on this and why simple i wanted to represent cote d'ivoire <laughs> okay <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. This is what's me being selfish. And I just want to sell. Because Acheke is very, very uh, common in West Africa, but it comes from Cote d'Ivoire. And just even the process that it's made of. What you're gonna have is a finished product, but the way it's processed back home, it is, there's a ferment, they ferment the cassava, it takes days, okay. they work on it and they make, they make it to those grains. Cause it's not, it comes from a root. Yes. So yeah. it's a very tedious process. I don't know how to do it. I've never done it. Okay. The woman that do it, my hat goes off to them. Cause we eat that chicken almost every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you wouldn't even know the work that goes into it. It almost sounds like it's industrialized, but it's not. Oh my goodness. It's done by hand, all of it. So imagine. So we respect that chicken a lot. West Africa loves that chicken, but it comes from my Bijan. So I have to show it the way we make it properly. So yeah. Oh, all right. I did notice in the recipe, you, you noted that you could get it either, is it frozen or dried? Yeah. What is the difference there? So the frozen one is this one. So this is the way it will be made in Abidjan, and this will be the finished product, right? So this is imported from Ivory Coast, and it comes in here frozen because they can't just send it here fresh, because if it's fresh, then it will be moldy, right? Because okay. they sure. get on the boat and all of that. So it comes in refrigerated trucks. So when it comes frozen, you have to let it tow or just defrost it before you work on it, and that will make it even fresher. Now, the box one is dehydrated. So that's the best way to import it. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? So it's people have been doing this for the longest before they started doing this, because it was they had to figure out how to get it here, because because of the time that it takes on the boat and things like that, so. Do you have a preference, one that you like better? Of course, this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course, this. This just reminds me of home. Dehydrated one is okay, and it's like, the process is fairly, easy but once you try this mm -hmm. it's never the same you know you will know the difference nice so yeah and it's gluten-free right it is and i can i know that everybody is on this gluten-free kind of like um era we've been doing it for the longest <laughs> <laughs> i love that so you're stealing our cassava now oh, beautiful i love that <laughs> and it's okay okay <laughs> all right well let's get started where do you want to where do you want to start i want to start with showing you how this is done first because this goes into the microwave. So once we're done with it, we forget about it and then we can move on to other steps. So I'm gonna show for the people at home, I've already made a batch here. And um, I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay, yeah, do it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm okay. We use our hands to do this, and we also use our hands to eat. Okay. So all the utensils that I see disappoint me because <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to immerse yourself in the culture, you have to do it right. Put your hands in there. Yeah, you're gonna get your hands in there. It's gonna be fun and it's gonna be great. So the achike comes here double wrapped, and uh, this is tall. If it wasn't tall, it will be very. It's like very hard to deal with it. So if you're at home and you already tow it, it should look like this. Can you, th can you do like the, the cheat thaw thing where you thaw it in warm water? Is that No, woof, you don't want to do that. So no water because then we don't know if it's like there's any holes in there because you don't want it to oh. immerse into the water. So that's why even in the recipe I was saying that I wasn't quite sure if I have to even um, show how we we're gonna wet it but i was saying you have to sprinkle water on it because okay. it's a it's not a delicate process you just have to get used to the texture so this is some part are very hard and some part are soft because i did tow in the microwave but now we want it to be like homogenic everything has to be the same it doesn't need to be super wet it doesn't need to be super dry it is um uh, you just want small, between. you want to separate the grains there. Correct. So you separate the grains. Some people will have it harder. If they have not put it in the microwave, they throw it on the counter overnight, it will be harder. So you probably are not going to get that texture. And what you're going to use is the water. And I'm going to show you. I'm not good at following recipes, so don't hold me accountable for anything I wrote there. <laughs> <laughs> just I have to come up with it for you guys. <laughs> no, it's good. I appreciate that you did. I know that's hard for a lot of chefs. It's it's very tough to write down what is what feels intuitive. For me, it's painful, but yeah. it's okay. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate your work. So here, this is the amount of water I'll put in it for now. You have to have a feel of it. And then once you're done with this, you're going to transfer it in a microwavable bowl. You can do it in batches. Okay. You can do it as a whole. If it's your first time doing two batches, just because uh, this is the texture that we want right now before we put it in the microwave. It can be revisited if we, it needs to be. 
It but looks like a cross between like a couscous and quinoa. Like it has that kind of the look of the quinoa where it's a little translucent almost. Like, yes. Yeah. So this is a, I keep adding water. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not quite there. I can feel it. I just can feel it with my hand. That's not something you can do with a spoon or you can do with, the, with gloves on. You want to feel it. So keep your hands very clean throughout the whole process. So there's no cross contamination between your fish, your veggies and your HK. Yeah. So this here, and I'm gonna show you what I have. This is the one that's already done. Oh wow, okay. You see how it's puffed up? Some people would just oh, yeah. warm it up from a bag. It will be okay, but it's, you're not gonna get all of it. This is what we want. This is good. And this has been warmed in the microwave it's done. For just a couple minutes? No, five. Five, okay. Yeah, five total. After I put my water, I got the, the right amount of water. I put it in there for five. Now, for someone who is starting, I would say go in like two minute increment. Okay. Check on it. You don't want it to be too wet. Again, you don't want it to form this bowl in there because then it's like overdone. Okay. You need it to be fluffy at the end. So you're just adding a little bit of water at a time. And work on if it. If it feels dry, do you add a little bit more water? Yes, before you correct. Put it okay. Correct. Because this, we we'll put it in there, it's going to get fluffed up. So we're good. Okay. Yeah. At this point, is it ready? Could you taste it at that point or no? The one that's yes. done here? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I used to be in boarding school and uh, when I was like a teenager. And then we didn't have access to certain things because it's a boarding school. You go eat and then that was it. But then we get hungry, very hungry at night. We'll have a chicken, like uh. a lot of a chicken, like kept away because that will be contraband. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it will last two weeks dry. We'll eat it like that. Oh my God. To tell you that it's possible, but yeah. it's not okay. It doesn't smell <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, not the most delicious thing. Okay. It's not, but you, we eat it, we mold it right there. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Just like blue teenagers. <laughs> we do have, we do have one exactly. question. Huh? We do have one question from okay. a viewer. She wants to know, how do you know the consistency is perfect? Will it be grainy like Play-Doh or a smoother kinesthetic sand? Don't go with sand. Mm. That's too dry. Mm. Don't go with potatoes either. Mm. When couscous is done, it's fluffy. So if you cook couscous before, it needs to have that fluff in it. So the grains don't have to be separated completely because that's not it. You want it to have a where they're still together, but they can still like, you know. English is not my first language. No, so no, no, it makes total sense. the words sometimes. Yeah. But I think once you get the fluff, you made it. Mm. Don't let it be potato fluffy. Mm. Okay. Got it. Okay. Good. So now we have that done. We will next go with the so. So this is our roughly chopped vegetables. So okay. that's something I prepped before. I figure everybody knows how to dice stuff. So you <laughs> yeah. want to roughly chop this. And this is um Achike can be eaten with different type of sauces. So it can be eaten with stews. This the version that we're making is with fried fish. So what this does is just bring out so much flavor from the fish, from the raw vegetable and the sauce on the side. So Ivorians are the one that do all of this okay. because it is the way we make it. We eat it with stews and soups and all kinds of stuff because it's at JK. So this is all you do. I had chopped my tomatoes, my onions roughly, and then I put some garlic in there also. Um, everything has been diced and then we're gonna add some water. So that's just the onions, the garlic, the tomato. There's no oil in there right now, nope, right? Not yet, because okay. we're going to boil this. And okay. then what I like to do sometimes is just add my tomato paste right away and let it all cook. So this is like double concentrated tomato paste. That is like chef level tomato paste there. Well, mm -hmm. if you say so. Mine are tiny. <laughs> I have like little tiny ones in like squeeze bottles, but that's great. I like this because you can just close it and put it back in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Unless we have big batches or something, we'll use like the big kind of tomato is cans but yeah so we're gonna start this <laughs> you're too important you need an assistant for these thank you <laughs> thank you so much oh my gosh, girl. yeah so medium high is good for that and then um right away we can start working on our fish okay because that's how quick it goes so you have to be able to multitask yes if you want this to happen and then the other thing is that um it's better when it all comes up warm Mm -hmm. So if my fish is fried, it means we have to eat. Okay. If that makes yes. sense. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to be, I have had, I got peppers in the, um, in the recipe. So what I'm going to do with this actually, before I go with the fish, 
because of the everyone's tolerance to pepper, I'm not gonna mix it with the rest of the food. We're gonna make this separately. Okay. So this is not in the recipe, but we're gonna do it here because we have a crowd. We wanna make sure everybody's comfortable with the level of pepper. So you can just scoop it if you want it. If you don't want it, just don't touch it. Got it, okay. Yeah, it's not that bad, but it's great. It works with it <laughs> very well. So I'm gonna get this and we're gonna chop this. And yeah. This what kind of peppers are these? So these ones are called God, they're not poblano. This, they're not. I think I, I am. I'm not sure. I don't know how to say the name. So Serrano is smaller than that. I think it's I am pepper. I think some like, some like that. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm Good, you got it. <laughs> I know what I need most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These look like little scotch bonnets. Yes, yeah, those baby. are scotch yeah. bonnet and. Uh, they're spicy. It's yeah. been a minute since I've seen an Anaheim. Yeah. Chili, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is spicy. And uh, I mix those because the texture, I like we're going to do it roughly because the texture also matters. Everything matters. It's not going to be pasty looking. It's going to be just rough looking because we're going to quickly boil them. And then from there, we're going to um, saute them really okay. fast. So I don't know. People so are going to cough. <laughs> Does the boiling cook them? Just a little bit. Okay. We don't need to have. We don't need to have them like. It shouldn't be pasty texture. It shouldn't also be a fry texture. So it's like it just roughly kind of like saute, pepper. Um, yeah. Nice. The process really matters because everything we do bring more texture to whatever we're making. So the process should not be overlooked. So it's important. And uh, what I said that I was going to add one to this, I'm not going to let it melt in it, but I'm just going to do it for the taste. So I'm yeah. going to. So you never wear gloves with the hot peppers? I, the question so at is home, whether she wears gloves with hot peppers. At home, I don't wear gloves with the hot peppers. At work, I do because it's a lot of pepper that I'm probably processing because we also manufacture. So we make pepper sauce, the ghost pepper sauce. You want to wear gloves. <laughs> but here, because it's like, eh, it's not too much. I can do this. Is there power for this guy? I'm not even sure that I put it down right. So I'm going to like roughly chop it. So not just one setting, if it's possible. I did something wrong. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, everybody got pulse. their own gadget in their kitchen. <laughs> pulse. pulse again. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Perfect. That's good. <laughs> that was Thank great. You. Thank you, chef. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, so I'm very gonna... rough. The seeds are still in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys want to see. Take a look at this. Right? It smells super green and fresh, actually. It's really nice. So, so what I'm gonna do see. once this is done, we'll transfer it here, just to not get another pen dirty. <laughs> Pretty rough. Very rough. That's good. Good to see it, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we'll let this cook down until we don't have any water before we add our oil to it, and then uh, we can get started on the on the fish. Really. I love that you offer different options for the fish. If somebody's like not like comfortable with whole fish, there you could do it with fillets. You said you can, you can. There's another thing, achike. Um, so the street style achike, we have few ones. So there's a style that the men make. So it's only men that actually sell those. So it's achike with tuna. So it's like the um, Diva is also big on uh, tuna a lot because we have the ocean right there, right there. <laughs> and then we have a very large port. So we do have a lot of tuna. So tuna is like a big delicacy and it's like a salty tuna. Ooh. You're right. So we use tuna and it's called garba. That's made with ajake, roughly chopped onion, tomato, and that. not the sauce, because it's the men that make it. Got it. The easiest stuff ever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. No pun intended. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so we're gonna let our oil. How high is ten? Is ten the top? Is ten too hot? I don't know. Okay. I'm yeah. sure if you had this in your home, you would yeah. be very familiar with how it heats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're learning. Yeah. 
This yeah. is not my kitchen. So. No. <laughs> right. When you come to someone's kitchen, you have to be a guest. Yes. A guest, yes, guest, yes, so you don't mess up something. <laughs> but yeah, so this is cooking very nicely. And um, I called on adding some bouillon to it. Uh, this is how they come for us. You can have it powdered. You can have it like better than bouillon. Better than bouillon. These don't have any meat in it yeah. anyway. So they're yeah. all like vegetarian type of bouillon. So if you're fancy, you can make your own bouillon. That has never occurred to me. That's the goal for us. <laughs> That's the goal for us. I'm thinking eventually when we get there, because I want to bring the freshness out of everything. Yeah. But hey, if I get time, I'll make my own bouillon. Oh my god. So then you know you're coming to my restaurant, you're getting like, oh my god, you all the time. You know? <laughs> the fancy stuff until I become a five star Michelin. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. So yeah. So I add a little bit of that. I will rectify the seasoning over time. So if I think it needs more, whatever I would do. So because this has tomato paste in it, it's gonna probably start like getting bubbly. So we just have to go with cushion. That's why I'm not adding any oil yet until it's all cooked down. Because once you add the oil and tomato paste is in there with all that water, it's going to be a hot mess. Okay. So, yeah. So this is good. Our oil is warming up. I'm going to show you what the fish looks like. We already, I um, already got it, the fish, clean it. And you get this at Asian Midway on Park, is that right? That's where I get it. Okay. Yeah. He got it all ready for me. And I'm going to wear gloves with this. Smells good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use. Oh, wow. There are already seasoned. Fish is it? So we have stripped bass and then we have white fish. So mm -hmm. stripped bass and white fish. So those are the two kinds of fish we got here today. Um, I like to use this kind of fish because they don't, they don't need any scaling. Um, scaling can get very messy. And then it's also like very good. The taste is good. You want fish that has a lot of meat to it, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. That's why I was like, you can go with tuna or flounder, if anything, because those also work, right? So this is really good. This is like what the woman makes. That's like woman kind of fish at chicken. It's like pricey too on the street because it's pricey. Oh, it's yeah. fresh fish. It's really good. I do the, I marinate it. That, that doesn't have to happen necessarily. All they use is flour and salt. Okay. Simple as that. But I marinate it because, because just because. So there's a little paprika on there. Yeah, paprika, black pepper, black pepper. and okay. some salt. And then we just have a little bit of flour. The coating does not have to be thick. No. It yeah. is not your deep fried type of fish. No, no, no. This is like golden. That's what you want. Very okay. nice texture to it because you're eating with that chicken, which is a starch. So you don't need the fish to be overly coated. Got it. If okay. That makes sense. So, is there flour on this already? Not quite. Okay. It's right there. So okay. we're gonna work it. with this. And so. So yeah. when did you? How long do you put that in, like the marinade? Like, does it matter how long? It didn't. Um, it doesn't really impact anything okay. for me, um, unless I'm grilling the fish. Okay. So if you're grilling the fish, you usually marinate. You probably want to have it in the fridge for like four hours or overnight. Okay. Which is best. Overnight is great. So this we do it with tilapia, and also there's another kind of fish cow. That's another one that we use if we're oh, gonna wow. grill okay. it. So those are like really good ones too. Heck so yeah. you can have a chicken with like grilled carp or grilled tilapia. The key is to have the skin on, the head on, everything else. Okay. Not filet, you know, so it's not, you know, you're doing the right thing. Okay. But yeah, so. I use know. the whole fish. All yeah, right, love we're it. We're using the whole fish. So we're going to use this and we're gonna need to cook this. I will say, I was here prepping earlier, and she asked, she said, what kind of audience do we have? Do we have an audience that might like the heads? So you guys can thank me for saying yes. <laughs> Yay, we get vicious. Uh, so we, we've got a very open, exploring audience. Yes, we yeah. do. We have a very open yes. audience. Yeah, I was I, a bit, I'm not worried about it usually, because in my mind, I'm selling you the culture. So I shouldn't be worried about that, because I'm thinking, you know what you're getting. Yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. if you're coming here, you're getting that, right? There's no, like I said, I don't compromise very much. I compromise with the pepper and that kind of stuff and making sure that it's not too salty, it's not too extra anything because a lot of people are eating my food, you know? I know there's this woman that came to me for, at a festival and she's like, I can't get anything anywhere for diabetes. So I am diabetic. I was like, say no more. I made her salad with whatever I was making and she was very happy. And I was like, that's what I want to do, making sure that I, I'm inclusive, but at the same time, 
I'm not compromising too much on the process or yeah. the taste of things. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I was actually going to ask you about that, about what you have to adapt to make the food work. Because there are things that you can get here that are different probably than what you can get at home. It used to be like that. Now we don't have that problem anymore mm -hmm. because medicine has gotten so diverse. Ah. Uh, and then, you know, Chicago is like right there, right? So everything <laughs> yeah. is coming to, they get a lot of stuff from back in my country. Yeah. And then that's why my supplier, I will call him a day or two in advance and say, hey, I'm going to need typical of this, da, 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 da. And then he will grab it for me because he has a truck that goes every day. Amazing. Right? Wow. So that's awesome. it's not as, it, it used to be bad. It used to be very bad. We used to adapt, but then there's like, international market, which is an African store, yes. and she has almost everything. And then you have, just like, we're creating a niche one way or the other. So nice. it's not as difficult anymore. And then you have Mexico, right? Yucca comes from there, that's cassava. So we use that. There are things that are typical that you probably are not gonna grow here yeah. or see, or they're gonna be three times as expensive. It might cost absolutely nothing home, but once it makes it here, it becomes something big. It's like, and then the crazier little thing, it's like, oh my God, I'm not gonna spend that much money for it, but you need it in the kitchen, so. Yeah, there you go. will. Or you do what I do. When you come back from home, you get 32 kilos of baggages, you get five <laughs> of those. You can't carry them through the airport. You need help, all of this stuff. Just and it, roll it. Yeah, and it's all stinky because it's a oh, lot yeah. of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but immigration knows, so they let us get through. <laughs> That's good. That's so yeah, so now we can do these things, so. We're not compromising. That's the whole thing. That's great. Okay. Yeah. So I just put a little bit of seasoning in my flour. Because I've already seasoned this. here a little bit. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. The reason why we do this, so it can it can uh, cook thoroughly. And then uh, so it doesn't get bubbly also. Got you it. You know, because okay. it's like it's all closed. You will see bubbles on top. It's not a deal breaker, but this is good that way. Because okay. then you get that um, crispy texture type of stuff. So Ooh, yum. that is what I'm going to do to check my oil. Quite right there yet. I'm gonna go to eight, and uh, yeah, this like, is the process. Crossing we do have we do have one other question that you probably get a lot. Someone wants to know when your restaurant is going to open. So we're crossing our finger for January because we do have um, some renovation to do. So once we're done with the renovation, hopefully, it would take three months or less. So that's the plan. So once we get that, we'll open. So it's all up in the air. Mm -hmm. Not really. It's up in my hands too. <laughs> <laughs> it's up in so, your hands. Yeah, yeah. So next one, I'm getting my keys officially. So nice. yeah, we're we're moving in, but we have work. So and this is in the Kennedy Place Apartments, um, right. kind of near Barley Pop. Yes. You guys know where that is on Atwood. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. So that's that. I'm gonna check on these. Her table line needs to be right near there. Okay, I can add my oil to this. So it's cooked down enough to the mm -hmm. point now where you're ready to add the oil. Yeah, because the bottom is even darker, so which means it's not burnt, but the tomato paste adds that. Yeah, because it's got like a sh like sugars in it. Cool. Like, yeah. So that's it. We're I have done the thing where I've left it and then it burnt and yeah, I felt regret. <laughs> <laughs> An induction can be powerful. The key with that, if yeah. you burn it, do not pick up the bottom. Just whatever you do, just stay on top. Oh. Yeah. Or you just like scoop it out of it and change pot right away. Oh, that's great. So you don't have to worry too much about it. So that's going to happen. That's an amazing pro tip. I know, right? Mind blown. I was like, I got to get it off. No, you don't. Yeah, because I know both of my bottoms are burnt right now, but it's no big deal. Yeah. I will. I will handle it. All right. And then someone wants to know if you ever cook fish with cornmeal. Is that a West African thing? No, it's not. Okay. It can be something from East Africa, I believe, but not West Africa. We don't really use cornmeal. Like I say, we don't do the very, we don't do the hard coating. It's uh, because usually we're eating our fish with different sides. So we don't want necessarily for the fish to overpower everything. It's like there's a certain balance that we're looking for. So, yeah. So this is good. Wow. <laughs> for sure, it turned it down. I kept pushing that. I know. It wasn't it, doing it, it for me. It's, you got, it's a, it's temperamental. Okay. It's got, it likes a, like a light touch. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm heavy on the touch for sure. Yeah. It reminds me of my parents just like stabbing at the phone. Like, stop, stop. You know what they do. <laughs> just be gentle. Perfect. We're going to let it simmer down. Okay. Do its thing and then that's <laughs> it. That's pretty much all you have to do here. Now, sometimes I would just put a lead on it and forget about it on, on medium low and it would do its thing. I will add my salt eventually when I can taste it, so I know how much salt I need to put in there. Really, that's it. Nice, okay. Yeah, and uh, I think my oil is still not ready yet. Um... <coughs> One is too low. Low, yeah. It'll get there real fast. Okay. And then you'll probably have to just give it a Adjust it down, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. You know what we can do in the meantime? Yeah. Cut our onions. Let's do it. Again. And tomatoes. I say let's as if I'm helping. I'm not helping. Yeah. <laughs> let's do it. And I have... This is like the garniture kind of like process now. Uh, when we chop this off, you want to do this very close to when you're done. So it's all fresh. Uh, because you're going to um, use vinegar and stuff to make it. So once I'm done chopping them, I'm not going to do anything with it. I will let it sit. I'm just going to move these just for the moment, yeah. So you can see that a little bit. Yeah. We'll move it back in a minute. Mm -hmm, no worries. I asked for a whole cucumber. It's huge. So I'm going <laughs> to use half of it. This whole thing about the recipe, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is for four people. And uh, if anything, I probably will go with an extra tomato. I put two in there, which is correct. I'm going to use this for now. And what I'm going to do is go rinse my vegetable, and I'll be right back. When I first moved here, I had the tendency of using a splash of bleach in my water to rinse my vegetable. I had a friend that was like, what are you doing with that? <laughs> and I was like, no, we need to do that. We really need to do that because you never know. And he's like, no, you don't have to do that here. And I'm like, yeah, you never know because <laughs> it's needed. And it's, um, yeah, I'm crazy about germs and things because I'm thinking it's raw where you don't have the opportunity to do anything with it in the pan. If it go in the pan, it's okay. But if it's fresh, it's like, it has to be clean. So that's why we're going to keep on rinsing stuff. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It's important. I, are, are there other things that you, like habits that you sort of had to adapt once you moved here? Mm -hmm. Like with your cooking specifically? Make sure the doors are open when we cook because the smoke alarm. Oh. <laughs> we don't have that. We don't have to worry about any of that, you know? And trust me, I'm not from a hut. We live in a big house and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff. But it's vented. Yeah. We don't have to worry about any of this stuff. But here it's like you have to take extra cushion with things. Now, something I'm going to do is I want this to be sliced thinly. So I say julienne. So it has to be sliced thinly. And this is what I would do. I know. Don't be scared. I'm fine. <laughs> this would have me. This is what I want. If I chop it and put it on the board, it might not be the same as what I'm doing right now. Are you guys gasping right now? It's yeah. not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, because you're going toward your hand. I know. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Like, the woman will do it without that. So there's another way to do it, too, which is not any better, but. <gasps> okay. Oh, God. Nothing will happen. <laughs> I'm trying to be precise with this. If I put it on the board, it's not going to be the same. It's very thin. It's, it's thin. very, very It's thin. the whole plant. You have to have it thin. So put it on your board. Do it the way you know best to do it. Don't follow me. So that's a disclaimer, right? Don't do what I would do at home. <laughs> don't, don't do it. I, I, if I wanted this, I would use my mandolin. Mandolin? Okay. Mandolin. 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 And my husband has made me get a stainless steel glove thing that I have to use with the mandolin. Yeah. But it does work. Yeah. And this is not too sharp and I either. haven't cut myself since I have the glove. <laughs> it's a badge of honor to cut yourself as a chef, though. I have a lot of things on my arms and stuff. And it's like, oh, I got this from a pot. I got this one from a stove. I, got I have seen chefs like grab 
things out of this oven when it's going. It's just chef hands. They just, it's like no big deal. I'm like, I like the feeling in my fingertips. Like I really, li I like it. I like feeling things. Sometimes you forget that you're using your fingers. And it's like, what? Yesterday I was, Sunday I was using a creuset. Yeah. I put it in the oven and I opened it. <gasps> and then I was like, what? <laughs> But the did was done, and I had to close it and get a towel. Like, whatever. Who am I fooling? Yeah, you burn yourself all the time. Sometimes I don't even have any fingerprints. On that note, someone wants to know a personal story of the worst or most surprising kitchen accident you ever experienced. Oh I don't goodness. know if it's that or something worse. <laughs> That's a great question. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember. I was at the farmer's market not too long ago on the north side because we sell there in the morning um, on Sundays. We stopped because of all the festivals we had going on. So we're back at it soon. I literally took the spatula, or whatever you call this, a very large one, out of the oil and put it on my arm. <gasps> it wasn't purposely done. It just happened. And then when I put it here, I was like, ah! <laughs> then I removed it and I went and got ice very fast and everybody around me was like, are you okay? These ladies sell flour, right? they were very sweet. They were like, are you okay? What happened? Is that a bee? And I was like, it's not a bee, it's the oil. And then I got the thing off of it. So I have like a huge mark here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's really bad, but it's okay. Does it hurt still? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it itched sometimes, but it's okay. I'm sure that was like a second degree burn. I know, probably. I probably would have, I should have been gone to the hospital. <laughs> hey, gotta keep selling. <laughs> <laughs> On the grind. That was bad enough. Yeah. And then someone else wants to know, why does the onion need to be cut so thinly? <laughs> so, <laughs> like I said, everything has a purpose. Everything makes sense once it's done. The reason why, because the onions are raw and they're going to be eaten raw. Mm. And if it's too thick, it's not gonna feel right in your mouth. And what I'm gonna even do when I'm cooking after we're done with the fish, the hot oil, I'm gonna put some of it on the onion. Oh yeah. So just to like change the texture of the onion, it's gonna be translucent, but it's not gonna be cooked either, right? So we want it thin enough mm -hmm. that the oil can do its thing, Got if it. that makes any sense. So that's why. Everything I do, there's a reason why. So don't question it. <laughs> <laughs> or do and you will explain it. Do it. <laughs> Just do it. You won't regret it. And this is. You took the seeds out of the cucumber, I assume, to like make it a little bit less watery. Correct. Because we don't need that watery texture at the end. Mm -hmm. It's going to be too much. We're already putting vinegar in it. So it's going to bring out the water from all the vegetables. I feel like this was a huge year for cucumbers. I had a gazillion of them. Yeah. They're good. And tomatoes, frankly, too. Well, like, yeah. We've just been drowning in tomatoes. <laughs> Me, too. Like, I still have so many. Yeah. I didn't water my tomatoes for two months, but they grew. They grew. <laughs> like, a lot of them. <laughs> they grew. They're there. And I'm happy after this. I think my fish should be okay. My oil. <gasps> okay, not quiet. Almost. Oh. That's not it? Almost. Okay. That's it. I will be. <laughs> I'll be right there. Those are going to taste great. Mm. <laughs> Fried onions. The back side. Some oil. Yeah, you want some more? Yeah, some oil in there. I didn't put any yet. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. So now we can work with the fish. Now I'll do this, then I'll go wash my hands. This is all you need to do. Yeah. Did you have to fillet it? No, you gotta, you just, yeah. The question is whether she chopped up the whole fish and gutted it and everything. And you got it, and then you remove the gills. Okay. Is that what it is? I What's in so. the mouth of the fish? Yeah, I googled it. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure of the pronunciation. So you remove that. You may use a scissor to do that. I use my hand and just put two fingers in there, just like pull it out. You have to be cautious when you do that because it can be sharp, it can cut you. Is there anything besides flour in your dredging? I just add a little bit of paprika, some salt, and that's it. Now you can already smell the fish. And that's it. Gently. Yeah. It's not going to do anything to you. Gently. <laughs> and when it's done, it's going to go on a plate or on somewhere to? Yeah. 
I'm, I'm going to show you how we plate it. So I brought some wooden platters to show you exactly how we do it. If you're buying it on the street or something, or in the restaurant, this is how they put so much love into doing that. The street edition is big. And yeah, for this here, we got that. The wood is beautiful. It's really pretty. And now, I'm going to need a bowl for this. This looks so fresh and so good. That's the whole point. The contrast of the fresh veggies with the sauce and the with the fried fish. Yeah, yeah. They don't feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting everything. It's healthy. And again, if you don't like frying anything, grilling is the alternative. And then you can also put some in the in the oven too. We mm. make fish. The only thing with that, you're going to need to marinate it very well. I have this marinade that I make. I tell you, I put it on sale in stores. We'll have it at the restaurant all the time for people to also pick it up. Nice. So with a marinade, you will have to just, you don't have to do anything else but just add salt. Ah. You use that, you marinate your fish, you put it in the oven, you'll come all the time and grab it from But then your food will taste just like pie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Someone did just ask what was in that marinade. So I have a lot of greens in there. So poblano, green No, now I'm giving up the... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. So yes, green pepper, parsley, onion, green onion, poblano pepper, mm. uh, what do you call it? Um, ooh, ginger, garlic. You have elderpugas. That's the name in English too, but I can't do the accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you have those provincial herbs. I yeah. Call. Yeah. Okay. But you Herb de France, herbs. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the herbs, and then you have, we put paprika in there, black pepper in. I use the coarse ones, and then I will make it into a paste. So everything is just made into a paste for you to have that ease. Because if you have to go all the time buy those ingredients and make them marinate, and it's a lot of work every time. So I put it in a pouch for you. You can keep it in the fridge or the freezer. It can last you years because it's all fresh. Nice. Nothing is happening. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're just fixing the sound really quick, guys. Thanks right. for your patience. Well, so you tell me when you, when you lost me if I have to. We, we have backup here, so okay. we, we still got it. Okay, so perfect. Good. Like half an hour ago. If you could repeat everything. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So we're going to get a little bit Thank of you. salt. Yeah, yeah. I think it's what you need and the best of Oh, yeah, okay. So we're good. You're using fine sea salt. Do you have a uh, preference between that and kosher salt? Or? I use kosher, too. Okay. It depends on what I'm doing. I use kosher. I like to use kosher for marinades. Uh, okay, yeah. sure. For marinating stuff. Or if it needs like a lot of salt to like uh, marinate it, of course. Like I will use kosher for fish nice. if I okay. have it. Someone wants to know what is one ingredient you could never ever be without or you always use in your cooking? <gasps> That's a good question. Ooh. <laughs> Just one? <laughs> Garlic. Mm. Yeah, I love garlic. Yes. It's a must. I have to have garlic. It doesn't matter what I have. I have to have garlic. Can't do without garlic and vegetables, really. Because I make marinade out of vegetables. So that goes to tell you a lot. So vegetables, big. Love garlic a lot. Of what type of garlic? Oh, oh, yeah, regular garlic. Are you asking if it's like the purple garlic or the regular Your garlic? Your guess is <laughs> Yeah, because they have two kinds, right? There's a the purple garlic. No, I'm not that fancy. Just garlic. <laughs> and peeled garlic. I hate peeled garlic. Oh, wow. So I yeah. get it in this big jar. They already oh, wow. peeled. So thanks for everyone who peels the garlic. <laughs> you make my life way easier. So we appreciate you. Yeah, it's good. So we're making a friend like of mine always gets garlic. It's like already chopped up, um, which I just get like bulbs. Right? I don't like that. Yeah. But I, when I write recipes now, I will sometimes do like one garlic clove or a teaspoon mm -hmm. for the people who just, that's what they want to buy. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of those. I used to use them, but I just feel like, like an aftertaste. I yes. don't know where it's yeah. coming from. Even yeah, a little the one in olive oil, it yeah. just, there's weird taste afterwards. 
get it, get it like peeled and do whatever you want to do with it. I like the pe the peeled is Confit nice. them, uh, put them into a paste, put them in the freezer, put them in ice cube trays. It works. Garlic is good. So this is done. We're waiting for the fish. So when the fish is done, that's when you plate everything, yeah? Yeah, for you, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I feel like you plate everything when the fish is done. And then now, I probably need this a little higher. I think it's becoming too smothered. I don't want that. Oh, you can see the fish's eye. Yeah? <laughs> Fish's eyeball. We were talking about eyeballs yeah. earlier. I remember there was a food writer in Madison who described fish eyes as like like a stale gummy bear. And I was like, all right, like that's not, that's not bad. Like texturally, like I can I can hang with that. Everything on the around it, like the retina and everything, is very soft, gooey type, yeah. oily. Ooh, okay. very oily. It's good. It's not bad. And then you have the bulb. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like hard, very hard. You can't do anything with that, so but just the side is good. Now I sound like a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love but that. Yeah, it's, good. It's, nice. it's really good. They used to tell us that it makes you smart. I didn't know what that meant, but I ate it. So I wanted to be smart all the time. <laughs> and it worked, I guess. So. Yeah, that. <laughs> and I think it's just the oil, the omega and all that. We're, Lauren and I were talking about it earlier. I'm like, oh, that's the reason why. It's yeah. All together. It's special. Sure. Like the eye makes oh. you so smart. So it's like, hey, give it to me. I eat yeah. it. Why not? That's great. Oh, yeah. So okay, we're not picky eater. It's a good kid all together. Nice. It should be okay. Who taught you how to cook? My mother. That's all she's done. Oh, that's, that's all she does. That's her life. That's like literally what she wakes up for, and what she goes to bed for. It's like feeding her family just came first all the time. And it was like on her mind all the time. It's like, even when we're done eating lunch, it's like, dinner. And I'm like, calm down. There's nothing going on. <laughs> it's like, no, I have to prep for just it. You know? I have to make sure it's all good. I have to be up at 4 a.m. And she had help around the house. It was not enough because she wanted to do it. So cooking was just coming from my mom. And the crazy part is, I never really asked, how do you do this? I just stood there. Sometimes I look, sometimes I did it. Sometimes I just put the food in my mouth. I figure it out. It is mm. the craziest thing ever. I don't know what my brain does it, but it does it. You know, like even the street food, because I make a lot of street food. It's not made in my home. I wasn't right. allowed to eat food outside until I was 16. Wow. And I wasn't even allowed. I did it. I went to eat food outside and I became addicted to it because it's, like, it's a different taste. We always say when you eat plantain from outside and at home, two different things. I don't know what makes it like that. Okay. It's delicious. It's the thrill of eating outside. I don't know. It, just, it was just something to it. So when I eat outside and there's something, I'm like, what did they use? And I'm trying to like figure it out. Mm -hmm. Or something I just looked at my plate and I'm like, ha, huh, I see. I was gonna reproduce that. My mom hated it because she was like, you need to learn it from me, I'm the best. And I'm like, I get it, you do it great, but sometimes I wanna make a street style. Mm -hmm. And she's like, that's cheaply made. I'm like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone at home loved my cooking because of that, because it was a change. Uh, home had too much going on. There's a lot of delicacies, there's a lot of steps, you know, boiling the beans overnight, all that stuff. And I'm like, no, we're eating at noon. Okay, I'm boiling the bean at 10. You oh, yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, I'm doing it right now and I'm getting insulted for it. You're not doing it right, but hey, everybody loves it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, That's it's so almost fun. like a dare. Yeah, so yeah, I love that. And I have that thing where if I like something and I ate it at a restaurant, I'm gonna have to go make it and say, I'm gonna make it better than that. Oh. And then whoever ate with me, you have to try it. Cause then you're gonna be like, oh my God, agua. The <laughs> Italians have nothing on you. Yes, I know. <laughs> I love that. It's my thing. It's like, I die, I, I live for this. It's like, I want that. I wanna make it happen where it's like, you come to me and I always tell people, we cater, right? And they're like, what do you make? I'm like, I make anything, mm -hmm. just ask. And they're like, what? I'm like, I do, but West African is what yeah. I want to do. That's yeah. what I put first. But hey, I can do anything. 
I love that. I can That's a gift. It it's is. like a superpower. That's kind of like what I was trying to tell you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I get it. That's Without amazing. saying it. Yeah, it is a superpower. It's a superpower. It's yeah. mine. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So we're winning our fish. And uh, you guys back there, careful. All right, I'm going to step away here a little bit. Yeah, you do that. Because the, the fish eye has like, kind of like water in it. It's going to like, yeah. it's going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you stay up there. <laughs> we have insurance, right? <laughs> yeah. OK, good. Beautiful. That's Ooh, it. I love you. Yeah. You want it to be golden like that. Not burn, just gold. I feel like the thing that I'm often learning when I'm standing back here is to mess with things less. Mm-hmm. Like I mess with things a lot. It's not just you. A lot of people do that. <laughs> yeah. They like to mix stuff. Um, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Don't mix anything. Don't mix just it. let it be. Sometimes I'll be cooking and I'll, I'll like get like mushrooms or something and I'll want them to be browning on the bottom. And my husband will come through the kitchen and think he's being helpful <laughs> and just grab. <laughs> grab a spoon or whatever and like start messing with it. I'm like, what are you doing? That room always trying to be helpful. Yes. They're messing with stuff. Trying to be helpful. No messing with anything. Mm -hmm. I want to saute the pepper. Um, and I hope everyone can tolerate it. <laughs> we might get a little sneezy in here because of the spices. But yeah. it's going to be great. We're going to have an adventure. You finding what you need? I'm looking for something for the induction oven. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That'll Perfect. do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to saute very, very quick. It's going to be painful, but it's going to be OK. <laughs> it's going to be painful, but OK. I like this. If I do too many spicy things in the kitchen, the cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm like, all right, I overdid it. I'm sorry, guys. They don't my, know what's happening. Yeah, it's my son. When I hear my son coughing, and you know, kids, they cough extra. <laughs> like, dude, it's not that serious. Then I start opening stuff because the alarm is going up, and he's like, oh! I'm like, yeah, I know. It's all of us. We're panicking and then we're using stuff and fanning. He knows how to do it now because he grew up seeing me do it. So he's like, fanning stuff. He's like, so short. It's like, ah. to fan the like stop fanning. Just close the doors. Like, why is your door open? I'm cooking. How old is he? 12. Oh, does he help? With the. He. <laughs> <laughs> he would love to help. He's really good at helping me with small things. I don't feel like he's safe enough around okay. certain things. So I don't, he has special needs. Okay. So he uh, his motor skills, he's getting all of this, yes, and it's great. But it's like, dude, if you put peanut on bread, it's everywhere. So oh. it's like, we're not going to get close to the skillet, OK? Oh, yeah. So now in middle school, he's learning those daily living activities and all that good stuff. And I think he's ahead of a lot of people, because he's good at it. He's like, good. my mom all has right. taught me so much. <laughs> and he wants to be a chef. It's like, why not? Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for him. All right, so we're going to saute this very quick. I'll put it on high. So those are the peppers that you chopped up. You left the seeds in. You've got a little bit of the bouillon in there. Yeah. And this could be, so this is like a kind of a powdered bouillon, but if it's better than bouillon, you just put a little scoop in there. Kind That's of thing. it. Yeah. Just a little scoop. And then every time you feel like it's not salty enough, you can adjust it. I get that a lot, that my food is not salty enough. I just think it's not over salty. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It's salty. It's where it's supposed to be. But yeah. Nice. You're going to get it very bad. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to get it. Because <laughs> we're not under the fence. That's like <laughs> going to be terrible. This is the thing you do in your house. You're going to like turn on all the fans. You're going to open the windows. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Like if yep. you're doing steak inside. Same idea. So once we're done, we just plate here. Mm -hmm. OK. Or so. we can plate it. If we make it less busy and plate it, that's OK, too. OK. How we been on we, yeah. Five minutes left, so. Oh, we're doing beautiful. Five That's minutes. Great. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to be plating. Yeah.
Yeah, Good. she's going to clear off a little, a little space over here. Oof. And one reason why I use that KK too for today's, today's demo, you need at least four or five hours to cook African food. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Atika is one of the quickest too. So that was like a good choice. Not so well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I'm put my fish in. this is how you would get it at a restaurant? The way I played it? Right here, yeah. Correct. Got it. That's the goal. That's the goal. It's okay that I'm doing this really quick. Right? Yeah. With my old super hat. As we finish this up, I think we'll pick our, our wine winner. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be... Multiple questions said. That Ooh. Lindsay said, this is a great question. I like so. the question. Yeah. I think that's a sign. And Leopold, sometime, and pick up your bottle of wine. Right. And thanks for asking questions. I am excited to taste this pinotage. It's going to be delicious. And also that no phony Negroni. I'm into that. I love Negronis. I don't care if they're phony. I love phonies. You love phonies? Yeah. You like the phonies. <laughs> Ooh. So the step before plating is to make this. Okay. So that's like the last step, of course, after all of this. And that's this guy. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to need uh, this and the vinegar. And then I'm going to scoop up oil from the pot so directly. In the recipe for the veggies, the fresh veggies, it said uh, red vinegar. And I emailed you and asked you about that if you meant like red wine vinegar. And you were like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different type of red vinegar. It almost looks brown. OK. It's, I don't know what kind of vinegar it is for sure. I even have it in the store that I get it from. She was closed, unfortunately, because someone got sick, I guess. But I wanted to show you what it looked like. So I don't even know what to compare it to. It's not apple cider either. It's not an apple cider vinegar. But any, any vinegar that's not an apple cider vinegar would work here? Yeah. 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 So this, we're probably going to need a little more salt. And then uh, I didn't put the whole thing. And this is just going to give it like a little bit of like umami or saltiness or... Mm -hmm. It's yeah. going to give it a lot of flavor too because it's just fresh vegetable. It's going to bring it all together. But yeah. The, the, this... Yeah, stuff here is like adding. And then I will just do a little bit of vinegar. And I need something to scoop up my um, oil. For a scooper. I got it. Oh yeah, okay. I was gonna say, and it's what I would do. Here. Simply that. Oh, this is a cool technique. Yeah. yeah. And gently just do this. Ooh. This is why you cut the onion thinly. And this is going to give it a lot of juice, as you can see already. So we didn't need the juice from the cucumber. Got it. Okay. Because the tomato is going to have some juice in it too. Correct. And we can play it. All right. Beautiful. Do you want to go up there and play it? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Over here is good. That's good. Thank you. Okay. So. My hands are clean still, so I'm going to use this. Like this kind of thing, maybe? Oh, no? Yeah? <laughs> We're good. Remember? Oh, hands. We use hands. our hands. We make sure they're clean for you. 
Now in the restaurant, because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff, we're going to wear gloves and do utensil like we do when we sell. But I just want to show you exactly what we do and how we do it. Because what it is without me showing you what we do. <laughs> if my ancestors see me using something for this, they're going to be like, oh my God, that's not the way we do it. <laughs> Yeah, this is why I get burnt. <laughs> Ooh, it's beautiful. No, this one is the white fish, I think. Mm -hmm. You can say it's a little more, I don't know. Um, it's elongated as opposed to the stripe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Stripe that's the wider yes. Wider. I'm going to add more fish into this. So my adjective came apart because I didn't do it very well. But it's okay. I'm going to wash my hands again one more time. Ooh, you can smell those peppers. We're not going to use too much in it. We'll sizzle. How to know when the fish is done? Medium is the high is good, mm -hmm. and go with go with the first six minutes before you flip. When you're flipping fish and it's not ready, it's gonna glue to the the skillet mm -hmm. because it, it still has water that it's gonna try to release. Mm -hmm. So you can play with it. Just pick up the spatula and move it a little bit. If it's moving finally, then it's done, no mm -hmm. issue. But if it's like, eh, I'm not moving, mm -hmm. then it's not done. Don't force it. Okay. That's what people do a lot. And one other thing is. You can coat it with salt or throw some salt in your pan. That helps. Yeah, that helps a lot with that process. So I was trying to be fancy with this. <laughs> uh, it's not working. So we're going to go with this. That's all right. It's beautiful. And I'm going to scoop some of this. We want color. We want texture. We're going to do that. And I'm going to separate this. So your pepper, because not everybody will eat pepper. I want to make sure those are separate from, uh, and my last sauce is over there somewhere. My red sauce. There you go. And then I will take some of this, put it right here. Mmm, it's beautiful. I love that dark red color. Yeah. So this is it. This is your chicken. We'll have special plates just for this. Larger plates, if that makes sense. All right, let's just bring this guy out. Maybe over here where we can see it. No. Uh, this portion here with one piece is for you. Family of four will get more. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Thank you so much. I do want to thank one, one more time Kesnick for hosting us here and then Leopold's Book Bar Cafe for providing the wine pairing that will go perfectly with this finished dish. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Oh, my